Now we all know tech companies are spying on us, but who's spying on us the most? Is it Microsoft? Is it Nvidia? Is it Google? Is it Steam? Is it EA? That's what I wanna find out today. So I wanted to do a simple experiment. So we have a system with all of those services running, and I'm just going to look at all the connections that are being made by each of these services. And we'll try to understand how nefarious these are, who's doing the most spying. Now, of course, we start off with with Microsoft and their rewards platform. So Microsoft has this platform where based on your search data, they can give you some rewards that you can use to donate to charity if you like. So that's one of the things that they're using to collect data on. The next one is API.edge offer. Again, Microsoft Edge probably trying to offer you ads or new features. By the way, I want to also mention that all of these requests that we're looking at right now is data that is being sent in the background while the user is doing nothing. I understand how the internet works. If I want to visit a website, there has to be a request from my system to get that website and the website needs to send me that data back. We're not talking about that. All of the communications we're looking at is while the system is idle, while the user, me, is not doing anything. I just have my computer open. I'm not visiting any website. I'm not sending any messages or emails. This is just the communication my system is making on its own without my consent. Well, technically I gave them my consent when I agreed to the terms and conditions, but let's not talk about that. We've got some assets.msn.com. This is probably the most benign connection. So this looks like stuff that is simply loading images or content to view somewhere in the system. So typically anything that's a subdomain of assets means it's just web data that's being delivered. Now, this is a security related connection. So this is navigation.smartscreen.microsoft.com. So again, and in order to protect you from things like phishing, Microsoft sends a ton of data to its smart screen. Again, worth knowing if you like using Windows Defender, Windows Defender is entirely based on sending all of the malware you run on your system to their servers. So they're constantly looking at every single app you execute, every website you visit, and sending that data to the cloud. Now, login.life.com, this is likely for the email client. Blogs.msdn, this is again, probably some kind of content that preloading for Edge to be faster. I assume the same is true for learn.microsoft.com, but you can see a pattern already. There's just so much of Microsoft. Kind of makes sense given it's the operating system, but I will make a point about this a little bit later on in the video when we look at other software and how it's designed to run. Once we kind of move past some of these, we have a cloud messaging.edge. Also, I don't really use Edge to send messages, so words mean something else now. Finally, we've got uh, update Google APIs. Again, Google APIs are baked into everything. Even if you're not directly using Google, if you're using Maps somewhere, if you're using any kind of a Google service, like their tracking or AdSense, it is going to use Google API, which means it's going to push all that data to Google anyway. So it's very hard to get the hooks of Google out of your system, even if you don't use Google directly. And then we continue with bing.com, copilot.microsoft.com. It's worth noting that I have copilot disabled on this system. System. I'm not using any of the AI features. I've turned it off, but of course, it still makes that connection anyway. The other brand that shows up here is NVIDIA. And I've noticed this is a recurring theme as well. So if we scroll down, you're going to see constant connections to ops.gx.nvidia.com on port 443. Now, this is started by the NVIDIA container process, which you will all have if you use GeForce Experience. You have the drivers installed on your system. Now, I do highly recommend you use the new NVIDIA app over the old GeForce experience, which required you to log in. That at least anonymizes your data to some extent. But the next one is even scarier, activity.windows.com. Now, I've been trying to dig out what exactly this connection is referring to, activity.windows.com, and I suspect it may have something to do with Windows tracking your system activity. Again, I do want to stress that we have opted for minimum telemetry on this system. This is the bare minimum. If you've got gone into your settings, disabled all the tracking, opted not to send any data that you can opt out of, this is what you get. 
I know what some of you are thinking right about now. What's this Luddite attitude? Of course, there needs to be connections to the internet. We use so many online services. You couldn't possibly have a functional operating system if there weren't these connections being made. But guess what? If you go back to an older version of Windows, like Windows XP, Windows 7, and you did the exact same thing, there would literally be no connections. There would be like one connection out to update to microsoft.com and that would be it. Also, one of the good things I discovered, despite uh, NVIDIA's constant communication and uh, Microsoft flooding their data centers with everything they can get, neither Steam nor EA's app have made any connections. And mind you, these are both services that are always online. So if a friend sends me a message on Steam, or on the EA app, it is going to show up. Steam is also keeping my games up to date. So if a game has a new update, Steam needs to know and Steam needs to download the update for the game. And it's doing all of that without making 500 connections when my computer is idle. Wow. So guess what? It is possible. All of this telemetry, the way Microsoft has designed it, is not the default. This is not how most apps work. It's never been how apps work. Now, of course, if I open Steam, as you will see, we made a connection to store.steampowered.com because we wanted to see the store page. That makes sense. But now that I'm not using it, Steam is not constantly pinging its servers. Interestingly though, when I did the same experiment with Valorant or Vanguard, it did make more connections, but neither Steam nor EA really do that. So if you don't open those apps, even if they're running in the background, if they're active on your taskbar, you're still not getting new activity most of the time. Even Discord, which is primarily a messaging platform, only made one connection in the same time Microsoft has made about 150. I think it shows there's a fundamental difference here in how Microsoft Microsoft handles network traffic and what their operating system architecture is like and what their goals are. So now you know who the biggest culprits are. If there's anything I'm surprised by, it's by how few connections are going to Google. But of course, it'll be super interesting to do this on Android and see how much Google traffic there really is. Now I do know on MacBooks, Apple also requires a network lookup for you to even launch their apps. So no one's really blameless here, but um, I think it's safe to say Microsoft might be the worst culprit. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you're a networking whiz, I'd love to hear if you can make more of some of these connections and server names that I just listed. And for those of you on Linux, sadly, if you use a copy of Ubuntu or any of the popular Linux distros, there will still be some telemetry associated with it. Nothing like this, but everybody's kind of moving in that direction. But Microsoft's definitely way out of field of everything else. Now, if you want to secure yourself against some of this data collection, you could watch some of my videos on blocking Microsoft spying. There are a few ways to do it via firewall, via the host file, via third party tools. And do like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Now, speaking of staying secure, today's sponsor is ThreatLocker, an interesting zero trust solution. Now, we did a full test of this, which you can watch using the link in description. That was a totally independent test. But they also wanted to sponsor some of our educational videos just to show you how it all works. So they have this a system called ring fencing, which prevents malware from doing certain actions on your system. So for example, your PDF reader can't reach out to the internet or a ransomware application can't access your documents. It's all based on access control and restrictions. It works based on whitelisting, only allowing trusted applications to execute and comes with its own online console where you can analyze any suspicious behaviors or look at new files that you might want to allow to execute or do something sketchy. It's a really interesting solution for enterprises that want to control what's being executed on their endpoints. And like I said, we've done extensive testing on it in the last year. So if you want to watch that, you can check it out. So show them some love for supporting our content and just check out their platform using link in description. You can get a trial and see how it works yourself. It's a different approach to your standard EDR or antivirus. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.